to function in that. Let's talk a little bit about love in this session. Love does not keep marriage together. And I believe every divorced person here will agree with that statement. If you are divorced today, that means you were once in love with the person. So you didn't lack love. There were some other things that came up in the relationship that were stronger and more powerful than the love. Whether it was infidelity and faithfulness, whether it was abuse, physical abuse, or emotional abuse, or mental abuse, or whether it is neglect or irresponsibility in finances, something came up that became more powerful than the love you had for the person. Which means that love can save you. It's tough, isn't it? Write this down, please. Successful marriage is a result of the application of knowledge, not the exchange of love. You can be in love, young man, all you want. It doesn't make the woman the right woman. You can express your passion to this man all you want, but that love you have for that man will make him the right man for you. And we need to get this fast because you see, in the book of Proverbs, verse 4, chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Wisdom is supreme, so get wisdom. And in all you're getting, don't get love. Get what? Understanding. You want to understand what it is to be a woman, what it is to be a man, how to live with a human. You want to understand the idiosyncrasies of a female and the uniqueness of a male. You want to understand communication skills. You want to understand how to manage emotions and how to handle anger. You want to understand the dynamics of disagreements. You want to understand how to handle unfaithfulness, broken trust. You want to understand, because if you don't understand those things, you're going to dump that marriage. Many marriages today could have been saved. I, I'm, I'm sure of it. But the individuals didn't have the equipment, the knowledge to use to fix the situation. No marriage is irreparable, believe me. But most people either don't know or they're just so tired, try it, they quit. And believe me, problems can make you tired. And this is why it's important for you to get understanding. I like what it says in the book of Habakkuk, Hosea rather, chapter 4, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It says, my people are destroyed for what? A lack of knowledge. Now here's the part you always miss. It says, because you have what? Rejected knowledge. I will also reject you, says the Lord. God is saying that ignorance is a choice. Here's what's important here about this verse. You cannot reject something that was not available. I know, I know, hey, I'm human too. I know you sit there and get tired of me saying, go buy this book. And you sit there and you got hell at home but walk past the bookstore. Do you know that all your problems that you're facing now are probably solved in a book in your house you haven't read? We reject knowledge. Have you ever sat in a session like this and you hear this kind of teaching and your first thought is, boy, he should have been here. Oh, they should have been here to hear this. What you're saying is, they missed it. They rejected opportunity to get knowledge. And God says, because you reject knowledge, I also got to reject you. Because I can't help you with what you don't know. And then he said something very important. He says, and you cannot be a priest before me. You see that there? The word priest means representative. God said, I don't want you to represent me if you are stupid. I don't want you to go to tell people you know me and you dumb. 
Stop saying praise the Lord and you can't handle your life. You haven't gotten the material to represent me and they tell everybody you know me. He said, don't tell anybody about me, please, because you are messing up my reputation. And here's the worst part. It ends with this. And I must also reject your children. What God is saying, if I write this down, ignorance is generational. What you don't know is transferred to your kids. So if you can't stay married and get it right, you got to be careful because your kids may also be in danger of having the same problem that you have. Can you always remember this? Learn for your unborn children. Read a book for your unborn children. Go to a seminar for your unborn children because that's what it's about. The less you know, the less they can learn. The more you learn, the more you can teach them. Because when you have information, you can transfer it to your children. God says, you need to get understanding and knowledge. Now, I want you to write this statement down. The most misunderstood elements of relationship is love. The most misunderstood element and ignorance that we have is love. We don't know about love. Ladies and gentlemen, I speak as a servant of the Lord today with a heavy heart because we are struggling. Many of us are, are tired trying to trust people. And it's because we are unrealistic. We are ignorant about what love is. Let's quickly review what we talked about in the last session. There are four types of love in the Bible. One is called phileo, which means brotherly love. The second is called eros, which is erotic love or fleshly love or sexual love. And the third one is terigo, and this is friendship love between two friends. And then there's the number four, and that is agape. That is the divine kind of love that God gives you. That's the kind of love that is not normal. It's a very important kind of love. As a matter of fact, that's the kind of love that forgives a person who commits adultery on you. You cannot get back with a person who breaks trust with you with filial. You can never make up with someone who breaks trust with you with eros. If your spouse committed adultery on you, you don't want to sleep with them anymore sexually. So the eros is even gone. You're afraid you'll probably get AIDS. Or you can't even imagine what they were with with the other person. And so your memory and your imagination does tricks on you. And you can't even imagine sleeping in the bed with them anymore. Eros can't help you. The only way to get back after that brokenness you got to go down to number four, agape. you got to get to the point where you have to do what God did. Even while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Now that's tough love. That's love that ignores all the rebellion. It ignores all of the cursing of God. God says, I still love you. That agape is in the believer. It's not in the world. But because you don't understand it, it's tough to do it. Make a note of this, please. Only agape makes permanent relationships possible. Only agape. Every other relationship will be temporary. So you cannot really experience God's promise of marriage, which is permanent until dead do you part, without God's material, which is agape. Everything else will fail you. Let me put it another way, please. Write this down. I'm giving you some good stuff here today. Write this down. Love is not emotions. And this is a very dangerous thing because emotions are actually chemicals. Did you know that? When you feel for someone, that's an emotional chemical reaction. And the problem with chemicals is 
they change every five seconds in your body. The chemicals are never stable. In other words, when your eyes look at someone, your eyes interpret certain things, and you have a pleasant experience. You look at that person's face, or their lips, or their hips, or their breasts, or that man's six-pack. And your eyes have a sensation, and then register right your brain, you go, mm hmm. Now, the adrenaline then kicks in, and your body begins to produce adrenaline, or these adrenaline enzymes, and you become excited. Now, the excitement you feel is adrenaline, it's not love. And you think, I'm excited about this person. No, you are adrenaline about this person. And we interpret that feeling as love. No, that's a chemical reaction. And if you fall in love on adrenaline, excitement, which some people call infatuation, the problem is we're going to have you look at someone else again, a different person, and get the same experience. And then a third one. And then a fourth one. What are you going to do with the first one you looked at? And that's why people commit adultery. That's why folks who are engaged to be married still break that engagement and go with someone else. Because they, they, they confuse adrenaline with love. Love is not an emotion. Secondly, Love is a choice. You have to choose love. And you must choose to love. Why? Because love is the response to understanding the value of another thing. When you value something, you put a certain amount of love on it or endearment on it. For example, if you bought a brand new car, 2012, and it costs 112,000 US dollars, I think you would want to clean that a few times. In other words, the more valuable the thing is to you, the more you want to treat it nicely. If you bought yourself a watch for $50,000, you would probably want to keep that watch in a different place than you keep the one you have now. Because the more value you put on something, the more you feel in dare to take care of it. So love is really a response to understanding value. That's why God loves you. God looks at you and he sees himself. The Bible says you are made in God's image. So when God sees you, he don't see what you think. He sees himself and God loves himself so much. He refused to let himself go to hell. There was a value he put on you. By the way, value is measured by what you're willing to spend for something. Write that down, please. Can I say it again? Value is what? Measured by what you are willing to spend for something. In other words, <laughs> uh, when you pay for something, that's the value you gave it. So the more you pay for something, the higher the value placed on it. So here's the question. What did God pay to get you? He paid his own image on the cross, which means that God placed himself value on you. You are worth God. That's how you measure value. And so if someone really, really claims that they love you, they have a response to understanding your value, that is measured by what they are willing to give up for you. God loves you so much, he gave up himself. Can you meet someone who can do that? Someone who will give up all the men just for you, brother. This woman gave up all the men. All the men want her. But she decided, choice, that she can give herself to you only until she dies. Man, that's value. That's love. It's a choice. Because the men who still want her didn't leave the planet. That's important. They don't go away. And when she goes to work by herself, they will wink at her still. But she got to remember, I made a choice. This woman you claim you love, 
What did you cancel for her? Did you cancel her, your, your own mother for her? You have to. If your wife got to compete with your mother, then your wife is not the most valuable person on earth to you. And she feels that. 